Welcome back to The Signal. I'm Andy Beanstock. Some people like rock climbing. Some people like mountain biking. And then there are those who like climbing rocks on a mountain bike. Trials riding is perhaps the most extreme sport you've never heard of. And this week, The Signal's Aaron Hankin introduces us to one of its most remarkable athletes. My name is Matt Gilman. My age is 29. And we are at Double Rock Park. It's rocks on a creek bed, river bed, big slabs of rocks. Uh, I come out here to ride my bike on this stuff and get over as many different obstacles as I can. It's safe to say Matt Gilman would be perfectly happy if his feet never touched the ground. After all, that's the whole point of trials riding. Balance, concentration, endurance, and topographical intuition. A good trials rider needs all these skills in spades. And when you watch Matt maneuver his way up a steep, jagged embankment of granite outcroppings, all while perched on top of his bike, you realize this guy has definitely got skills. His bike doesn't even have a seat. He doesn't need one. Uh, a trials bike is essentially a modified mountain bike designed to go over obstacles through the woods, either over rocks or logs or a mix. Um, so you might have some rollable stuff, you might have some stuff you need to hop on or over. A lot of slow, steady balancing moves. You just can't imagine how technical this kind of trials riding can be. It's got its own vocabulary. Track stands, pedal kicks, side hops, spanning, balance lines, rolls, gaps, drops. So what does it all look like when Matt puts it together? I keep thinking strangely of a cross between a caterpillar and a mountain goat. Slow, methodical, inching around, up and over whatever's in the way, with the occasional startling leap from a complete standstill. You need certain kinds of skills to be able to do it, and it takes a while. You can't usually just get on a trials bike and start doing a lot of the moves. You can do some of the basics, but for some more of the advanced stuff, you need to know a lot of timing between the pedaling and the braking and and when you can put all that together and get through like a, a section or a line clean without putting your foot down gives you the best feeling in the world. Matt's been hooked on the quiet thrill of trials riding for about eight years now. He's a natural, he's dedicated, and during the first couple years of his trials riding career he was on an incredible competitive trajectory. Then one day he went to the eye doctor. His vision had been getting a little blurry here and there, and he figured it was maybe time to get his eyes tested, get a pair of glasses. What the eye doctors told him came completely out of the blue. They basically said, hey, you need to go see a retina specialist right now. You're going to need eye surgery. It's much more serious than glasses, and we're making an appointment for you right now. You're going tomorrow. So I went and got the news that I had diabetic retinopathy and that I would need multiple eye surgeries to try and correct the problem, and there was a good chance that I would go blind. I was terrified. I actually had never heard that you could go blind from diabetes. I knew you could lose limbs from circulation issues, so that was half the reason I really got into cycling and stuck with it was to keep my legs moving, so I always had good circulation in my legs and my feet, but I didn't realize vision would be something that you could lose, so I was actually really terrified thinking about that. Over the next two years, Matt ended up undergoing 22 eye surgeries in both eyes. He'd have a surgery, it'd take a month to heal, he'd be able to see better, but then he'd have another optical hemorrhage. Even the smallest drop of blood could blur his vision all over again so he couldn't see anything but patterns of light. Eventually they ended up putting a silicone oil in my right eye to stop the blood vessel growth slash bleeding. So right now I got a silicone oil in the right eye. I've had replaced lenses in both eyes. I had um, a partially detached retina in my right eye. My left one got really badly detached. So that one's basically essentially useless. So the only eye I'm seeing out of is my right eye. And the best part of that I can see out of is kind of the upper right corner. But even with that, I'm looking through silicone oil, which is essentially looking through a bottle of olive oil. It's not the best. <laughs> Matt tried to stay optimistic through all the surgeries, but a reality was sinking in. He was steadily going blind. 
He had to accept a certain loss of independence, a reordering of expectations, all the things people go through when they lose their vision. But mainly, Matt just missed riding his bike. For a while, I was sitting around my house just uh, pretty much doing nothing, waiting you know, for surgeries and whatever. And I was just really bored of listening to the television or listening to music. And I said, you know what, I'm going to go grab my bike and just go out to the curb out front of the house. And I, you know, be able to just go under the rear wheel and hop from the curb over the grass to the sidewalk and just mess around like I always could. So I grab my bike out of the basement, take it out front, and I try to just get on my bike to balance and I just fell over. I tried it again and it just didn't work. I was like, what? happened and I put my bike away. I was really disappointed. I was like, there's no way I can do this. That disappointment lasted for about a day. Then Matt went out and he tried the same thing again. I was small steps. Like I got really excited when I could just balance and then I got really excited when I could hop on the rear wheel. Then I got really excited when I could hop on the rear wheel and then hop onto a curb. And then I got excited when I could hop onto a curb and then hop over the grass, you know, even if it was a couple of feet to the sidewalk. Um, it was just small steps. I never jumped into big goals. Once I realized I had to figure out a new way of doing things, it was small steps. So going, down, going down our usual route here, we're going to go down the okay. rooty section here. You know, it's like that shelf yeah, that drops off. Right. Okay. So I'll just get down here. Here, under a canopy of autumn leaves at Baltimore County's Double Rock Park, no, no. couples are out walking their dogs and kids today. are chasing yeah. each other yeah. around the forest trails. But they all stop what they're doing to watch Matt Gilman walk his bike down to the bottom of the riverbed. Okay, now stop there and you want to go 90 degrees to your left. You'll be stepping over about three feet of water. Wearing a white helmet a and more. poking the front wheel left. of his bike around like go. an antenna, Matt walks his bike over tree roots, right through there. puddles, yeah, between right boulders, there. and down ledges. And the guy giving yeah. Matt verbal cues is a riding buddy, an unofficial trials riding student of Matt's, actually. Right there, okay. This is my friend Bill Dukas. He pretty much takes me out for rides. You know, we kind of feed off each other. I help him out with riding. He helps me out with getting around. And, you know, pretty much I probably wouldn't be able to ride trials as much as I can without friends like this. In a word, it's, it's inspirational. I mean, to see a guy who's made the choice not to feel sorry for himself and to basically reinvent himself. And what I get out of it is I get one-on-one -on -one instruction, and I, it's amazing how he does it, where he'll just he'll put a hand on my foot to check my foot position on the pedal. He'll put his hand on my back to make sure I'm in the, at the right position over the bike. So he's an inspiration, and he's helped me to improve. It's ironic. I mean, he is in this relationship, in this friendship, he is a teacher. He's patient. He pushes me to do my best. He challenges me. So it is kind of an ironic situation. And he gets a free ride around uh, as, as payment for this instruction. Not Absolutely. By, not by choice. But I get free bike repairs. So it works for both of you guys. Absolutely. And that's where you start. I believe that's where you normally start. Good deal. Okay. I think I'll start here. Once Matt has his front wheel in a particular position at the bottom of the riverbed, the rest is instinct and muscle memory. Matt usually walks his bike over new terrain, mentally cataloging the topography inch by painstaking inch. But Matt knows this particular creek bed at Double Rock Park like the back of his hand. And like a rabbit let loose in his favorite briar patch, once he stands up on those pedals and starts bouncing, there's no stopping him. All right. Here we go. I definitely need to navigate things a lot more than someone that can just go out and just start riding because I still have that mentality because of being able to see and, and have ridden before with sight. I still kind of go out and just go, okay, I can ride it instead of going, okay, let me figure out exactly what's here in case there's any problems. It sounds like there's a, sort of a constant battle going on in your head between your sense of adventure and your sense of self-preservation. Yes, very, very much so. <laughs> Blind Trials mountain biker, Matt Gilman. He's a sponsored rider these days and he wants to give a shout out to Chris King Components and Endura Cycling Clothing. And if you're still curious about exactly what this trials riding is, what it looks like, and how in the world Matt does it, do yourself a favor and check out his videos online at 
blindbiketrials.com. For The Signal, I'm Aaron Hankin.